In this video, we're gonna run through the features of the new Simrad NSX range of chart plotters. There's three models in the range, a seven inch, a nine inch, and a 12 inch. And there's a range of transducer bundles that are available. They operate with the new CMAP Discover X and Reveal X charts that have been specifically designed to run with the NSX. And in this video, we're going to look at some of the features of the charts and the chart plotters. Before we get into the features of the NSX, just explain where this product is aimed and where it sits in the Simrad range. So like other Simrad chart plotters, they're primarily aimed at sports boats and fishing boats. Not really for a, a sailing boat, it will work on a sailing boat, but it's really designed for power boats, sports boats and fishing boats. And we're gonna have a look uh, at the transducer options that are available with this product. So it's bundled, you can buy it without a transducer, with a dual function transducer, which is Chirp Traditional, and also high frequency downscan. This is a transom mount transducer designed to sit on the back of the boat. Or you can buy it with the active imaging three in one transducer, which does Chirp Traditional sonar, it will do high frequency down scan and high frequency side scan. So there's your two options of the transducer that are bundled with the, with the product. If you have a shaft driven boat or you'd want a, a different type of transducer that doesn't sit on the transom, then you have quite a wide range of options. You can use a Sonic P79, which is basically an oil bath with the transducer that sits inside, and um, that sits inside the hull and fires through the hull, so you don't have to drill any holes in the hull. That will only give you traditional sonar. It won't give you the high frequency down scan or side scan, but it's a great internal inside the hull transducer. If you want to drill a hole in the hull and just have uh, a, a simple transducer. You can go for a P319 type transducer. So you drill a two inch hole uh, and this sits inside. So the outside is in the water. Um, that will again only give you traditional sonar. Won't give you the high frequency down scan and side scan. If you want a down scanning High frequency down scanning transducer that gives you both traditional and the high frequency down scan. Then you've got a bronze, what they call an HDI transducer, and these have internal tilted elements. They're available in three models: zero degrees, twelve degrees, and twenty degrees, depending on the dead rise of the hull. So this will give you traditional chirp sonar and high frequency down scan sonar. And then if you want all three, so high frequency, down scan, side scan, and chirp traditional in a through hole type of uh, fitting, this is the total scan through hole. There isn't an active imaging um, through hole at the moment, but this is the current uh, uh, solution for a down scan, side scan, and traditional chirp through the hull. It's called a total scan transducer and it comes with a rather large fairing block that you cut to the angle of the hull. For this walkthrough uh, video we're going to use the nine inch model and like a TV it's measured from corner to corner so that's nine inches across there and we're going to use this particular unit for a walkthrough of the physical features and also the screens. So on the bottom left of the screen, you've got the power button. She's got a nice slim 
profile. This bit that sticks out here, this is the internal GPS receiver. On the back here, you've got a rubber cover that when you open it, you have a micro SD slot for either your Discover X or Reveal X charts. Series of connectors on the bottom. The yellow one, that is your Ethernet connection to go to either a radar or another unit or another uh, Ethernet accessory. There's NMEA 2000 port. There's a USB uh, for storage. There is, this is the power connector. And this one is the Exonic transducer port. The seven inch doesn't have the USB. To power the device on, you press the power button in the bottom left hand corner. You'll hear a beep, it then will run through its boot up sequence. I'm afraid this camera I'm filming this with doesn't do the screen of the Simrad justice. Um, there's some glare, but I think that's from, well, that is from the camera, not the multifunction display screen. Okay, so this is the welcome first power on screen, which is your language. Didn't do that. English, you choose your country, United Kingdom. You choose your time zone. We can set up a new boat work or you can join an existing boat no network. If you already have Simrad products or Navico products on board, you can add this to that network. But in this case, we're just setting up a fresh network. And we're gonna start scanning for any devices that are connected. There are none, but it will just find its own GPS source and own echo sounder source, which are built into this unit. Once you've run through that initial setup, you can use your device straight away, or you can continue setting the device up, or you can run it in demo mode. Okay, so we're gonna continue to set this device up. So there are four steps to do a basic step uh, setup. We've already done the auto select all sources. The next thing you can do is add your boat details. So you enter your boat name, your course sign, the type of boat, uh, boat dimensions. We'll set that up. So you've got a very nice clear graphic here to set up your boat. So I'm just going to put some random dimensions in there. So clearance one meter, draft 0.5. The beam, I'll put in a couple of meters, and the whole length, say six meters. So very quickly, you can put all your boat dimensions in there. That's actually critical for when you're um, using auto guidance, because it will need to know the draft um, and those dimensions for um, when it's plotting a route using auto guidance on the CMAP charting. Uh, you can put in your cruising speed, your MMSI number, your whole identification numbers. Um, go back to setup guide. So at the top here in purple, we have two. That means we've got two steps left before we've finished doing a basic setup. You can connect to the SIMRAD app. If you press this, it gives you a QR code to scan. You scan that code. 
you go to the app or uh, it will take you to the um, either the app store or the google play store and download the simrad app and then you scan the uh, qr code again and it will set up the app on your phone and you can look at the maps on your phone and you can also do your planning waypoints all that on your on your simrad app but we'll go into the app in a little bit further detail later um, echo sounder the fish finder let's set that up so we have a transducer connected or it thinks it is in demo mode um, we're going to have the active imaging three in one this is the uh, transom mount transducer that does side scan down scan and traditional chirp sonar and you can uh, put the how far down the uh, transom the or under the water the depth of the transducer i'm going to leave it at zero for the moment and depth offset so if if you want to put an offset so if you want the the, the uh, depth measurement to be from the lowest point of your boat which would normally be uh, an outboard bottom of the outboard leg or an outdrive leg or the rudder or the uh, bottom of the prop but um, I'm just going to say waterline for this demonstration um, and then you have a choice of what type of waters you uh, you, you fish in or um, uh, you, you cruise in so most of the UK waters you're in your coastal you're under 120 meters um, you can change this at a later date it's really just for ranging the uh, the sonar so I'm going to choose coastal inland lakes and coastal up to 120 meters and that's then complete so once you've done your setup there are lots of different menus here um, we haven't completed it because we haven't gone into the Simran app yet um, on the water that's for things like calibrating autopilots and uh, heading sensors that sort of thing um, connectivity you've got wi-fi built in you've got ethernet connecting up to uh, uh, up, up to um, radars and that sort of thing um, you've got hotspot where you can make this a hotspot connect your phone to it um, boat network is other devices sources you can change the damping on on some of the update rates uh, in the unit NEMA 2000 menu that's important if you're connecting to say uh, NEMA 2000 compliant engines uh, you might be connecting to uh, uh, NAIS anything on the NEMA 2000 bus security passwords and so forth pin codes alert so you can set up alarms um, on pretty much every parameter that this thing is uh, displaying vessels and targets is really for AIS so uh, TCPA time to the closest point of approach and CPA closest point of approach all that if you've got an AIS um, device connected display you could, this is where you can change your icon size to be regular or large or you can change the um, you can change the brightness of the display and then under general you have about which gives you your yeah, serial numbers operating systems all the information about the software revision and all that kind of thing simulator software updates and reset so you can do a full reset if you got mixed up putting the wrong parameters in uh, you can do a full reset and then preferences uh, this is where you can change some of the things you set like the date format the um, language the country a lot of stuff that you put in there in the initial setup so really that is a basic setup so to get back to the home page on the right hand side here you have these uh, series of squares press that and this goes back to your home page now there's an alert here that's telling me that I haven't finished the setup guide but I'm not going to look at that 
and just press the cross and then these are our menu tiles. This is the home screen on the Simrad NSX. I put it into simulation mode so we can go through some of the features of the unit. It's a tile based icon system which is very easy to use. The first tile we come across is the man overboard tile. You click it and it shows you a map on the left hand side and this red button here is an overboard marker. You can click it, it drops a waypoint and it shows you the position of the way, waypoint, the bearing to steer to get back to the waypoint and the distance traveled away from the waypoint. It also has useful information on the right hand side like a, a which channel to call the Coast Guard on and a Mayday script and also what uh, flares and flags you should be uh, using. So the next icon is the chart icon and it brings up our chart. On the right hand side here we have instrument uh, parameters which you can press this button on the right hand side here, hide those, bring those back, you can customize these to any parameter you want that's on the system. This button up here with the three lines this enab enables you to change the look of the chart. You can add radar overlay if you're, if you're connected to a radar plus a heading sensor to, to line up the radar with the, uh, with the targets correctly. You can turn on and off AIS if you're connected to an AIS receiver or transponder. This particular chart is a demo chart in here um, and we are looking at a view from say a discover x chart but it also has features of the reveal x chart which are satellite imagery so you see on the land the satellite imagery and you can change the transparency of the imagery It also has shaded relief. So more detailed view of the seabed using LIDAR information. Again, that's a reveal X feature, not a discover X feature. And then you can add and change the param parameters of the chart to suit your preferences. Okay, I just want to go into a bit more detail about um, the CMAP Discover X and Reveal X charting. So this is a view of a Discover X chart and we're looking just in the Solent here. Um, and this is the Discover X. It's got all the information. It's Cardinal Boys, tides, currents, um, everything you need for uh, navigation. Now, if I turn on the features that are in the Reveal X, such as Shaded Relief, you now see the seabed in much more detail. So you can see all the gullies and reefs. And if you find a wreck, let's put this one there, and you zoom in on that wreck, you see the actual detail of the wreck. So that's called shaded relief. It's on the Reveal X version, not the Discover X. So Discover X is perfect for standard navigation, but if you want that shaded relief, you need to go to Reveal X. The same with satellite imagery. So we can look at the satellite imagery. We're looking at the Isle of Wight here. Let's change the transparency. So we're looking at satellite imagery of the Isle of Wight. Again, that's a, a Reveal X feature. The bar on the right here is the uh, instrument bar. 
Um, you can set this up to pretty much whatever parameter that you like as long as it's fed into the unit um, on the system. There's fuel information there, depends if you're connected up to a NEMA 2000 compliant engine or a fuel sensor. And this is the bar, there's preset bars. This is a cruising bar, a fishing bar, navigation bar, fuel, and a general. And you can customize these parameters yourself to create your own in instrument bar. If you want to hide the instrument bar, you click on anywhere on the screen and these four arrows in the bottom right hand corner gives you full screen. To zoom in and zoom out, you can use the plus and minus or you can pinch to zoom. This compass in the top left hand corner shows whether we're north up or course up and you can just press and toggle. It doesn't actually work in simulation mode, but it would just a quick press of that will change between north up and course up. In the bottom left hand corner, the magnifying glass, this is the map inspector tool where you can find uh, coordinates, waypoints, routes, um, tides and currents and it's searching through various tides and currents so we have our tidal plot here it has moon phases shows you sunset and sunrise to go back to the chart page we just simply press the chart icon here Let's zoom back in. Routing is very easy on this device. You can add a route by touching and holding on the screen. I could add just a waypoint if I wanted to there, or I could go to that point, or I can route and you can see it's dropped a little icon there, which is a leg of a route. And then to carry on the route, we just press and hold on the, on the display. And we've created two legs of a route using three points. We can either finish, we can rename that route You can then click on a leg of the route and it will auto route that leg using the data that you've put in about the boat parameters. So it works it out using say the draft of the vessel and using the lowest astronomical tidal data to make sure that you're on a safe part of the route and you can perform this function for each leg of the route. So I'm auto routing. And then we've finished our route. To go back to the home screen, you simply press the bottom right hand corner here. It takes us back to the home screen. The next icon is the radar icon. The NSX is compatible with the halo range of radars. This is obviously in a simulator mode, so you can have a standalone radar screen here. We're also showing AIS targets, which you can turn on and off. Again, you can hide the bar on the right hand side. 
So this is just showing a simulated file of a radar screen. So it will work with the Halo radars, the 20, the 20 plus and the open array Halo radars. So let's have a look at the fish finder function by pressing on the echo icon. So this is our traditional fish finder that shows fish as arches, anything in the water column and the bottom here. Shows our depth. At the top left here, it shows which transducer we've got fitted and the frequency it's operating at. If I press on the menu button here, I can then change um, range, the frequency and gain. I can change the color palette. I can change ping speed um, and change pretty much all the parameters of the fish finder page. If I click on the screen, I can then scroll back to the history of the sonar. And if I see something that is of interest, for example, this pinnacle, I can drop a waypoint, which will appear on the chart. So if I go back to the chart, you can see here it's dropped a waypoint. Now I can change the icon for that waypoint and the name of the waypoint. And if I want to go back and fish over that waypoint or just examine that waypoint, I can then go back. Going back to the sonar screen, if I want to resume normal sonar, I press a button in the left hand corner and then we start scrolling again. If I click on the pause button, I just pause the sonar and then resume by pressing play. You can record your sonar data by pressing on the transducer type and recording the sonar logs to uh, an SD card if you've got a blank SD card plugged into the unit. So the next is side scan. So if you have a side scanning uh, transducer, as we have an active imaging three in one, this is your side scan view. So the line in the middle is the top of the water column, i.e. the surface of the water. And you're looking down and to the right here and down to the left on this side. So that is the the black bit in the middle is the depth of water and that's the seabed on the right and the seabed on the left. Now this kind of high frequency imaging only that uh, will only work if the transducer is in the water. So an in-hole transducer will not give you this view. And again because it's high frequency it doesn't particularly give great results above about eight knots so the slower you go the better results you get. You can change the color palette and you can change the frequency. Um, some people prefer the sort of gold color palette, monochrome. So there's plenty of options to change to suit your preferences. The next sonar screen is the down scan. So this is high frequency down scanning sonar. So this will show you all the structure on the seabed and it also has a very good function called fish reveal which it uses the standard sonar to show the fish in the water column. So it's a really good way of differentiating between the bottom and any fish. So if you've got a low uh, so a fish that feeds on the bottom then you can see clear target separation between the fish and the bottom. Again, the transducer has got to be in the water to operate for the high frequency uh, 
down scanning sonar. A few other things you can do with this unit is you can connect an IP camera. There's no nothing set up in the uh, simulation mode, so um, I can't really show you an example image, but it connects via the Ethernet port, so you can have IP camera support. This waypoints and routes is for managing your waypoints and routes. Um, so we've got no waypoints in in the unit at the moment, um, and we've got a couple of routes there. So you can pick up your route, you can edit the route, and it shows you the route on the screen. So we can then change any parameters in this route. Tracks is a track management. So if you lay a track, which is like leaving a snail trail as you go, um, you can then review tracks, you can upload tracks and follow tracks, um, delete tracks. So it's just a, a track management screen. Instruments is particularly useful if you're connected up to uh, an NMEA 2000 compliant engine. Um, you can set uh, to a number of set pages such as cruising, motoring, navigation, single gauge, dual gauge, quad gauge and six split and you can edit these uh, gauges to be either numerical or analog graphical and you can set up the pages to suit. You can add a new page so you drag for example you can drag across digital gauges to create your own customized page. There's a tide screen here so we've already looked at the tides from the chart page but you can go straight into tides and you can look at tidal points for particular days in the calendar and you can change the location by looking at these are nearby stations um, you can change the location and look at the tidal plot for that particular location the last tile is a customized split. So, for example, if you wanted to look at all the different sonar functions, you just simply drag, save, and now we have our own customized screen. So here we're looking at traditional sonar, side scan, and down scan, all on one page. On the right hand side here, this is basically your most frequent used screens. So you can jump around the screens very quickly by just pressing on one of these icons. On the left hand side of the screen here, in simulation mode, it's adding an autopilot control bar. So here's our autopilot. So if you have a Navico uh, autopilot connected, you can engage the autopilot from this display. Also, if you want to connect up to a, an audio system such as a Fusion or um, a Sonic Hub audio system, you can have uh, an audio system bar that would appear on this side and it would be a quick access to the audio functionality. couple of other features with this unit. Um, this button down here is an waypoint button. So if you're on the chart, you can press that and quickly add a waypoint. Um, so we've added a couple of waypoints. You can then go into those waypoints through the waypoint 
uh, screen and then edit those and rename them and change the icon for that particular waypoint. Pressing on the power button gives you a screen where you can either power off the unit, you can turn it into night mode, so it chooses colours that don't glare in the evening. You can change the brightness, you can take a screenshot, screen lock and standby mode.